In this video, we are going to look at groups within WhatsApp Gold. WhatsApp Gold allows us to divide up and categorize our devices into manageable and meaningful groups, rather than having one long list of devices. These can be static or dynamic groups that can be customized to specific individual needs. WhatsApp Gold has three different types of groups. Static groups, where users can manually add devices on demand. Layer 2 dynamic groups, where devices are dynamically added based on different Layer 2 information. And WUG dynamic groups, where devices are dynamically added based on user-specified information or with SQL queries. Static groups can be created from the monitored network by selecting the drop-down on the Group tab or by right-clicking an existing group and selecting Create Group. You can then give the new group a name. You can also add a new group from the discovered network while adding new devices into the monitored network by selecting the Browse option during the group selection and creating a new group. Make sure to select the group after it's been created. You will then be able to see the group and the devices in the monitored network. It's also worth noting that you can create subgroups within a group. In this sample environment, we can see other static groups already created for Redfish devices, SNMPv2 devices, and storage devices. Next, we will take a look at Layer 2 dynamic groups. As the name suggests, these are dynamic groups that automatically populate based on predefined criteria such as role, name, or IP address. To create a Layer 2 dynamic group, create a group as you normally would. Give the group a name and select the Advanced Settings option. Next, select Layer 2 Dynamic Group. Edit the device membership criteria. In this example, our base device set will be all devices, and we will add a role filter for Windows Server. Click on OK and then Save. We can now see all devices that have the role of Windows Server in this group. And also, going forward, any devices that get added into the monitored network with the Windows Server role will automatically get added to this group. To take this example a step further, we could add an IP address range to show specific IP ranges in the results set. It's also worth noting that there is an automatic refresh of about 5 seconds on group memberships, or alternatively, you can do a refresh of the page. Another example of Layer 2 dynamic groups could be that you have a group configured to show all switches on your network, as seen in this example. We can then edit the group and enable the option to include connected devices. On condition that the discovery was done correctly and proper credentials were used and applied, we should expect to see all the switches and the devices connected to those switches as part of the result set. To see the results of this in the map view, you will need to have the connectivity links and link statuses overlay enabled. Next, we'll take a look at WUG dynamic groups. To create a WUG dynamic group, create a new group as normal. Give the group a name and expand the advanced settings options. Select the WUG dynamic group option and in this example, we will use the SQL builder. We will apply the filter to all devices and next, we will add a filter for credentials that has SNMP. Click OK, and we can see the generated SQL below. Click Save, and we can now see the created group that contains all devices that contain SNMP credentials. And because this is a dynamic group, all future devices that have an SNMP credential will get added in here automatically. We could also consider filters based on active monitors, device attributes, display names, host names, IP addresses, and SNMP OIDs. Next, we'll take a look at creating several WUG dynamic groups that may help in diagnosing polar lag. First, we will create a dynamic group that will show all devices that are polled by hostname. Polling devices by hostname contributes to additional polling controller overheads. 
If there are an excessive number of devices polling by hostname, it may be worth reviewing these if experiencing polar lag. Create a new WUG dynamic group using the SQL Builder and click the option to convert filters to SQL and click convert on the pop-up screen. We can now add in our SQL query that will return all devices that are polled by hostname. Click save and we can now see all the devices in the group that are polled by hostname. Similar to the last WUG dynamic group, we will create another group that returns all devices that have critical polling enabled. If critical monitoring is enabled on devices, it means polling is happening in serial rather than parallel on devices. This can put additional strain on the poller if there are an excessive number of devices with critical monitoring enabled. Again, we will create a new WUG dynamic group using the SQL Builder and insert our SQL query. Once the group is saved, we can see all devices that have critical monitoring enabled. Another WUG dynamic group that can be helpful in diagnosing polar lag is to look at all the devices that have high SNMP timeouts associated with them. If there are a lot of SNMP monitors where there is a high timeout value, it means that the polar is going to be busier for longer and possibly worth reviewing in the event of polar lag. The last dynamic group we will look at is an existing WUG dynamic group that can currently be found under dynamic group examples called frequently polled. This dynamic group looks for any devices whose performance monitors are set to poll more frequently than the default 10 minutes. Polling performance monitors utilizes a lot more resources than active monitors due to the amount of information being returned. Polling performance monitors on a frequent basis can lead to an increased polar lag and should only be enabled if required with caution. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this training.